Welcome back to John's Films. Today I'm going to show you how to create an easy video thought bubble in Fusion. Before that though, do me a favor, make sure you've clicked subscribe below so you catch all my future content. And if this really helps you, click buy me a coffee below. I put all the money back into hardware I can perform at the benchmark to answer the question, what hardware should we buy for DaVinci Resolve? Alright, let's get into Fusion. To get started, download the mask I created below. We'll use that to mask out the rest of the footage. After that, grab your background, be for me this girl standing against the wall, and grab your foreground and just drop it on your timeline somewhere above it. Oh, there we go. With both of those highlighted, right click and choose New Fusion Clip. Now I've got both of these uh, composited together. And if I jump over to Fusion, let's get a good look at this. So Media 1, I get by pressing the 1 on the keyboard, puts it in the first viewer. And I've got Media 2 here, I'll put in the second viewer. Now, I usually like to name these something, so I press F2. And this one's the coffee. And this one's the girl. Now we can keep it straight as we start to do our work. The next thing we need to do is, in our Media Pool, Drag that thought bubble and pull it down. Thought bubble. There we go. And the general flow of things, what we're going to do here, we're going to create an input to the coffee. That is the mask of the thought bubble. And the easiest way to do that is going to be using a bitmap. Not to feed that, but for the bitmap to feed the coffee. You'll notice here, I've got a square, and it only let a square of it through. It's because I need to come down and change the alpha mode to pre-multiplied. Once the alpha mode, that's a right click on the element in the media pool, change alpha mode, pre-multiplied. I've got a white area for opacity and a black area for transparency. And that's what allows me to get that nice look. Next, I'm going to use, and you may be wondering, John, why don't you have the girl behind it? Ah, there you go. So to make that happen, I changed the view on Merge 2 so that Merge 2 is now showing in View 2. Alternatively, I can just press 2 here or click and drag up Media Out, and that allows me to see the complete composite. From here, it could be as simple as highlighting your coffee node, hitting Shift and Spacebar, and then Transform. What this does is allow me to move the thought bubble. There we go. So... Frankly, maybe this is enough for you. We've got our thought bubble. It's uh, looking pretty good. It is still a video, so it's animated. She's looking at it. It's in the corner of the screen there. Might work. However, I think there's probably a few more steps we could take. Pretty easily, we could just use a shadow. So that was, again, shift and space bar, and then I started typing shadow. I'll add that in right below the transform for the coffee. Now I've added the shadow, but you don't really see it yet. What I need to do is offset it just a touch here. And then I need to feather it, because right now what we're getting is a really harsh shadow, so I'll pull the softness up, and you can see all of a sudden here it is, just peeking out the back. You know, I don't want this to start right here at the beginning of the clip. I want it to pop up like it's an idea in her brain. So let's jump back to Fusion for a second. The thought bubble... The bitmap, all of this creates this upper thought bubble of video, and the bottom down here just is her. Now, I'd like to find a spot where I think it makes sense for a thought bubble to pop up. So she's looking, her eyes dart, and then right there on that shift of the head is where I'd like to start the thought bubble. So to do that, what I'm going to do is keyframe a transform to pop this up. Now this transform exists is set the center. I'm going to keyframe the size. And we'll go with where we wanted. Remember when she turns her head just a little bit. Right there. Is about where I want it to start popping up. So I'll click the keyframe bubble over here on the right. The little keystone. And I'm going to drag this all the way down. Now you don't have any thought bubble. But I want it to pop up. So I'll now jump a couple of frames ahead. Note the white mark right here on my timeline. This shows me where my keyframe is for this element that I'm highlighted on. 
And I'm going to pull up just a little bit. We don't need to go too far. And I'll pull this thing all the way up to the size I want it right about there. So now I've got more of a linear bubble pop. It just slides right up. I think we can make it a little bit better even still. So I click the spline up at the top. And what this allows me to do is create a motion path for this thing. We'll go back to where we see the transition happen. It's linear, meaning straight line. I'm going to highlight both of the vertices that are here on the graph and press the F button. This gives me these ease in, ease out file handles. And now I can put a little bounce in it. So let's go back in our timeline and watch it pop up. There we go. Now, often one of the things that people will do, they will... I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it. They will have the pop-up zoom in just a little bit too far, and then they have it bounce back. So again, I highlight it, hit F. So in this case, you might be able to see where... Let it cache up. It goes a little too big, and then it's going to pop back down. In fact, I'm going to do that a little bit more. Let's, where is that? All right. So we'll pull it up exaggerate it a touch so you can see it better. There we go. Cash it up. Bam. And that gives it more of a pop effect. We're going to have a pop sound effect on that as well eventually. So here what we've got is the bubble with the shadow drop and we've put in some keyframes using the keyframe keystone on the side of the size and the spline to give it a little bit bouncier of an effect. Now that's uh, not exactly all we could do, though. Wouldn't it be nice if there were some sort of white bubble around it? You know, kind of like a cartoon where it pops up and it's happening inside the bubble, but yet it's still a video and still pouring coffee for her? How would we do that? Well, that requires a little bit different work here. This was an easy mask, transform, and a shadow. And we need to do something a little bit different now. The first thing we're going to do we're going to take the thought bubble, we're going to keep the bitmap, and we're going to feed it into the coffee. But on the back end of the bitmap, that to the front. All right, I don't want the shadow on this coffee because I want the white to be behind it. So I'm going to put this white bubble right behind that. But I want it to show out the sides, so I will use alpha matte shrink and grow. So I can type alpha, I can type grow and search for it. And let's organize these nodes a little bit. Starting to annoy me. Some of you out there were going absolutely insane when you were looking at that. Here we go. Me, it was a calm... Alright, it was bugging the heck out of me. Yes, we could auto-arrange. We'll do it to connected. And this should help us a little bit as we get this done. So here we go with alpha matte shrink and grow and a shadow after that. I can now merge this in with the transform. I'm putting the coffee on top of the rest of the stuff. And you can see coffee comes through. Here's my bubble. In fact, I want the bubble behind the coffee. Like this. And now my bubble I can drag and transform using what else? Transform node. This allows me to move it over, move it up. Now, what I've got here is a difference in size, but notice I don't like this because notice how close this gets right here on the edge. What I really want is a uniform white bubble around the whole thing. So instead of using any size modifier for that bubble, what I'm going to use is the alpha mat, and I'm going to use it as a grow. And we will redo the operation a couple times until we get a pretty good... And now you can see that I've got a uniform grow all the way around it, and that allows me to get a much better view of it. it becomes less of a distraction. There we go, I think 3 and 5 appears to be the magic spot. Now it is a little bit off. Um, shift it to the left, and I can change that with my transform. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Now, notice the keyframing is actually in this transform right here. Hmm. 
that's not going to work. So what if we got rid of this transform and we got rid of this transform and we made those two work together? They're coupled down here, so now I can transform down here and move it where I want it to go. Further, when I keyframe this, which remember we did by picking the point in the timeline that we want her face to show, so right about here, clicking on the size here, and because I'm dealing with this thought bubble coffee situation after the merge, it's all one object, and I'm keyframing just that object, I'm able to set the keyframe to nothing here, and inch it forward a few frames, and now I'm going to set it up to the size I want. In fact, I'm going to go a little too far, say right there, and then I'm going to click here and right arrow key a couple frames and pull it back down to where I want it. She looks up to the right, boom, pops into place. The last thing I want to do for this is use my spline here, select my size, zoom back to where it exists, press F, and frankly, that's probably enough to make it look pretty darn good. Let's see. It's going to have to cache. Pop. And there we go. Now, the last thing that I could do, I'll turn off my spline so we get some more real estate. The last thing I could do, if we play through this, looks pretty good. I think the coffee's going to start pouring here in a second. There's the coffee. She seems happy about it. But I don't like that this camera isn't fixed. I could try and stabilize the footage of her first, block the camera, and let this crop in a little bit. My other option, though, wouldn't it be cool if it were moving? But my thought bubble moved with her head. Hmm, how could we do that? I'm going to delete that merge node. Notice it got rid of that for the moment. And I'm going to add a tracker onto the girl here. So again, shift and space with the girl node selected. I type track and I add a tracker. This tracker, I'm going to key off of a high contrast area around her head. And her lips seem to do a very good job. On the right here, I'm going to pick the channel that I think gives me the most contrast, and by far that's going to be that green channel. And now I'm going to ask it to track that, and I'll track it forward from here. It's going to watch, and as the contrast changes on all of the footage with her lips and the green channel, it's going to track around and create a track path associated with that movement. I'll be able to use that track path to apply it to the bitmap and coffee mix that's going to give me the bubble moving with her head. Now we have the track data associated with her lips, and instead of a merge node, I'm just going to use the tracker as a merge node. I can put in a foreground, that's the green, and I can use the background as the input. But there's one thing I need to do first. I need to give it an operation. I go to the operations page, and I want to match move. What does this mean? Well, it means that whatever I put in the foreground, I want to merge over top of the background, and I want to match the movement of the tracker with it. So I'll pull this down to my match node, and now watch what happens as she moves her face, more specifically, as she moves her lips, the bubble tracks to the lips because it's been tracked against that motion. What's interesting is it even tracks when the bubble's not showing up, but because I've keyframed the bubble to pop up in space, it'll even track while it does that. Drop me a link below if you make something cool with this. I want to see what you build. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed yet, and click like. It helps other people find this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.